Moti Sans uh, is, is something that we will also bring in on the, on the floor. And then uh, what we'll try and talk about is uh, commercial real estate, Tamanna, because ah, yes. while we're talking about real estate having a great run, it'll be interesting to see what happens there. But Agam, uh, take it away. What do we have on the Reuters card? What's right, the focus? Absolutely, yeah. So, uh, well, we're coming off from the long weekend, and we have, in fact, two very important and very interesting subjects that we're going to talk about. One, of course, is the entire real estate sector, specifically in this case, the commercial real estate uh, leasing activity, which has picked up substantially. And then, of course, we have Moti Sons, as uh, our, our colleagues have already mentioned, well, getting oversubscribed in within minutes. We're going to talk about that one as well. But let's start off with commercial realty, uh, Neeraj. I believe uh, we've hit a, another record of sorts for the quarter gone by. Yeah, well, you know, if he's talking about real estate and residential and the launches that are happening, this one kind of, you know, slips under the radar. But I was, I was, I'm referring to a Collier's note here, uh, and and they've put out some data yesterday. So they say, and and the crux out here is that commercial real estate seems to be doing really well. Look at the numbers, guys. All right, Q4, which is October to December. Uh, yeah, Q4 recorded. 20.2 million square feet of gross absorption, which is the highest ever quarterly leasing activity. Now we're talking about people buying real estate, but this shows that companies are renting real estate at a very, very large and a fast clip. Yeah. Yeah. So that's part one. And the larger portion, they have given data for the top six cities, by the way, uh, predominantly, they've focused on that. Bengaluru, Chennai, Hyderabad the best ever quarterly performance for them since the COVID-19 pandemic. For 2023 at large, Bengaluru drives the best performance over one-fourth share in leasing activity. Doesn't surprise the tech capital of the country. But Delhi NCR is not behind, and Chennai are also about one-fifth of the market share in the gross leasing. So, so effectively, we've seen the commercial activity split between South India predominantly and Delhi NCR. Maybe Pune steps in a little bit, Mumbai MMR, commercial real estate leasing is missing. The reason I'm bringing this up is because when we're thinking of commercial uh, and, and players in the commercial activity, you therefore try to look at companies which are in the leasing market in those pockets. And I'll come to that as well. But here's the data that Colliers has given out, guys. Look at the demand in million square feet for Q4 23 versus Q4 22. And look at the YOI change that has come in. Chennai and Pune. And Pune is a small base, maybe Chennai too. But look at Chennai. Quarter 4, 2023, the demand. 4.3 million square feet versus right. 1 million in Q4. Yeah. Massive leasing happening in that market. Now try and figure out which are the companies which are active in that market. You get the brigades of the world, maybe some of the but others. Did you get uh, any sector specific action in this? Yeah, yeah. so I, I'm coming to that as well. So, but just the numbers first. So Bengaluru continues 5.5, very large, 58% jump. Chennai, 339%. Delhi NCR, 61%. So the max estates, DLFs of the world come into play. Hyderabad, 57%. Mumbai, 87%. And Pune, uh, about 100 odd percent. So massive uptick. And Pan India, too, has seen about 92%. So the, the, the crux is, this certainly means that global companies and Indian companies are taking up office space at a large clip, and which is actually great. And the fact that it's happening Q4, Augur as well for 2024 as well, right? Because it, there will be some spillovers that will probably come into play as well. Right. Uh, and I'll come to the point that you mentioned, Sajid, just before that. Factors that might be leading to this, uh, and please debate out here, guys, if you want to, but people say that a large pool of talent available in India, so therefore, you know, companies don't mind setting up these uh, large office spaces in the country. Low cost rentals, Indian rentals, very cheap relative to Hong Kong, Singapore, what have you, with reason, but low cost rentals available. And adequate grade A development. Some of these companies have built office spaces. The office that space that we are in, right? It's grade A, you can't find a fault. This is comparable to almost any that you will get in any of the other countries around the world. So yeah. adequate grade A development out there. India being seen favorably globally from a geopolitical angle as well. China plus one, but there's India is a favored destination, so that's part two. And global capability centers, when we say GCCs on the graphics, global capability centers, which are large companies, have resumed the expansionary activities. In Q4, they have driven over 50% of the demand. Right. GCCs alone, and half of the large deals which achieved closure in Q4 were accounted for by GCC and therefore that augurs well for 2024. Now, what is the point that you were mentioning? Is I'm you? talking about which are the sectors uh, which are you know taking up this real estate Obviously, space. Tech, tech is very, very large. Which yeah. basically means that uh, the work from home or the hybrid model is now getting converted to work from office. Yes. Right. And so the demand for office spaces are going up. Right? You could argue, yes. So that is, that is certainly one part. 
and uh, the Collier's report, of course, has data of what some of the other buckets are. So I'll, I'll pull that up for you uh, since you mentioned that, Sajid. But it's an interesting uh, point about the sectors. The top five deals that happened, there was BFSI, Bank of America did a deal, uh, Shell. So therefore, it's not just restricted to, to it's, it's tech. A, uh, Shell. Yeah. Yes, Wells Fargo, BFSI. Engineering and manufacturing and BFSI effectively have taken most of the things. Tech, unfortunately, is reduced in size, size, even though it still stays higher. And therefore, why we brought this up on Editor's Cut, look at what's happening to REITs, you know, Embassy, Embassy. Brookfield, Brookfield, Mindspace, what have you. You clearly see traction there because you presume that they are the dominant players there. But the other listed players, BLF, uh, Brigade, and we'll be talking to the management, of course, but they have mentioned this, that they are getting larger in this space. Prestige has mentioned that after they sold off that portfolio to Blackstone, they want to come back in hospitality and office space as well. Mm -hmm. And there are NCR players which are talking about Anantaraj, Max Estate, etc. talking about this as Have well. Have you mentioned anything about the yields, whether they've gone up or they've <coughs> remained the same? No, not, not really. Not, not mentioned in this note per se. So not the financial detail of what kind of yields have these been locked at. But suffice to say, large office space getting absorbed augurs well for some of the listed players And as well. by the way, FI 23, 24, we were supposed to see a lot of commercial play, uh, real estate coming on into the market because yeah. they were kind of completing, completing uh, so you know, let's wait and watch. Absorption is high, which is yeah. good. But yeah, well, uh, so we've come a long way from a lot of companies giving up commercial realty at one point in time because they wanted to adopt the work from home and well, the hybrid model. And here we are, we are in fact seeing record activity when it comes to leasing. So things certainly have changed over the past three years. But that's as far as commercial real estate is concerned and leasing goes. We move on to the primary market now and a new listing today that we have on the charts, and that's Motisan's Jewelry. Uh, well, it did get massive amount of subscription, but there are also some concerns, some risks which come into play. Sajit? You know, uh, it's a 390-odd crore company uh, in terms of market value at the upper end of the price band. Uh, but it this, it's a jewellery company based out of J, uh, Jaipur with four uh, showrooms and two manufacturing units. But it raises a lot of red flags uh, from uh, anyone because in the anchor book, I didn't see a single mutual fund participating in it. There were two foreign funds who were part Mauritius-based funds which were participating as uh, as anchors there, where there is around 36 odd crores from from these things. Uh, 99 or 0.8 percent of uh, you know revenues come from trading of jewellery, which basically means that they order somewhere, it comes in and they sell. So it's a trading. Job work is hardly 4 percent. Manufacturing is hardly anything. It's neg neg negligible. Mm. Uh, all the four showrooms and uh, two uh, two manufacturing units are promoter owned, and they have a, a related party transaction wherein they are paying rent to these uh, when the manufacturing facilities are utilized for both of them. Uh, I, I, I had asked them during the IPO why they are keeping the manufacturing unit because they're paying the money from the company. But they didn't have an answer for that. Um, yeah. You know, that's you know, th that's one thing which is there. The other interesting thing is that they're trying to pay off uh, uh, borrowings of banks, which is roughly around 58 crores, and augmenting their uh, working capital. But the borrowings they're paying are uh, at a lower cost, 8.58 percent average while they've taken money from the promoters at 11.6 percent. Mm. Now, they're not paying off that money, but they're paying off uh, the bank and uh, financial institution money which is there. And the working capital which is there is to, you know, get more trading volumes in, which is there. Which, which, is, which is different from a traditional mm. retail jeweler which we have seen, right? And uh, I don't think uh, they articulated enough to say that, oh, we are going to go beyond Jaipur to other cities. They were pretty much happy being in Jaipur. Right. So, I just have a quick question here. You know, when you said that most of the revenues of this company come from trading, that means while your revenues will be large, your margins may not be. And usually, they're sub 5% in general. In this case, your bid margins margin standard are over 13% .13 minimum. Yeah. So, how is this that this numbers come through? So, you know, they are into this uh, kundans and uh, studded jewelry, which is more prevalent in uh, the Rajasthan area. And that's where the margins are higher. So for a traditional retail uh, jeweler, it would be at 20% plus, but they're getting 13% because they are getting, they, are, they have the designs, that's they say, and they use the design to get it manufactured from, a, from five or six uh, other jewelers across the country, and they get it and they sell it. So they are sitting on a 13 to, four, uh, 13 to 14 percent margin 
uh, on an EBITDA level which is there. Now, it looks very surprising because that's a model then uh, which anyone can uh, you know replicate. But uh, you know, I don't know how sustainable this model is going forward for a company. Just wondering, Sajid, any any other major red flags? Yeah, the promoters were involved uh, yeah. in betting, uh, but which has been disposed of now as of now. But there is ongoing investigation of SEBI and uh, CBI, which is going for some of the promoter and promoter entities. Uh, that would uh, is, is is an ongoing process. And since we are in a disclosure-based regime, uh, you can disclose it and you can come out with an IPO as long as you have been very transparent in the RHP. Right. Well, uh, it does tend to make you think about how even such companies do get such high subscription matter of yeah, minutes. Yeah. It would be lovely to hear from the management today then. Yeah. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And of course, we'll continue to give you an update on the same. I, I believe we'll have a management conversation today? Yes, there is going to be. Okay, perfect. So there you have it. Well, we will be asking the management these questions. But, uh, well, that's uh, what we have in terms of the editor's cut this morning.